Ah, if you, uh, if you want to study Torah with somebody, which is a very good idea, a chavruta, to find a good chavruta, a good study partner, is uh, no less difficult than finding marriage. Because a chavruta is a, a very serious relationship. Uh, it's not a friendship. People think it's a friendship. I'm friends with this person. That's what chavruta. It's not a friendship. Chavruta is much deeper than that. And sometimes the chavruta are not friends at all. But they are very, very serious study partners. There are many, many famous stories of people that studied together that were not friends, but needless to say, were very, very good together. So, Chavuta is someone that first and foremost should have a uh, uh, similar ideology to you. Meaning, you should not become a Chavuta with somebody that's a anti to everything you stand for. If every time you say, or you read in the uh, Gemara, or in the uh, Alachot, or anything else, that someone that violates Shabbat is considered an idol worshiper, and they start debating you the issue, this is not a good Chavuta. Why? Because one of you is going to lose. And like I said, why should you put yourself at risk? Well, it's not the time to do Q. Don't do Q with your Chavuta. So, a study partner should be someone that has a similar ideology to you. That's number one. Two, they should be somebody that is also on a similar wavelength with you, meaning that if you are a fast, sharp thinker, uh, then uh, you should have somebody that's a, uh, you know, that goes along, that, that's a right fit. It's a right fit. It doesn't mean that you're a fast thinker, they should also be a fast thinker. That's not always necessarily the right match. You need to know what you match with. You need to know what you match with. Uh, some people that are fast thinkers only can match with fast thinkers. Some people that are fast thinkers, it would be terrible for them to be with another fast thinker. Uh, so it depends. You have to. You, sometimes you'll have to go through a few of them. Uh, so that's that's another thing. Third, they need to be a, a kosher person, meaning you have to make sure that this person is not trying to come and interpret the Torah themselves. They're trying to learn what the sages said along with you and not become your Rashi and you're going to be Tosfot. That's not the idea. So it's to have somebody that's, that's coming to, uh, to learn. So another point is they should bring something to the table, meaning that they should have some knowledge that you don't. They don't necessarily need to be huge Talmidei Chachamim uh, already, but uh, they need to bring something to the table that you don't know, whether it's a certain t- amount of knowledge or teachings or so on. Uh, they need to have to bring something to the table because, again, sometimes uh, you have a, uh, people are uh, either too far apart or too close. So you have to, again, these, these are different things like marriage. Like I said, it's like marriage. You, have to, uh, you may have to go through a few of them uh, before you decide this, this, is, the, this is the one. Uh, but sometimes you get the blessing that the one that you have is, a, uh, is good. Another point is, is that you have, before you're critical of them, you have to be critical of yourself first. Meaning, everything you judge them for, judge yourself double. Don't, uh, don't, uh, don't blame them for your uh, deficiencies. So that's a, uh, another thing. Uh, you have to make sure that you're reasonable and you have to also give it time to work. Give it time to work. Um, another thing is, is that you're, there has to be some type of chemistry between you, meaning it has to work as far as the relationship itself. Like I could tell you also, um, there are different types of people that are going to be chavuta. Sometimes you have a chavuta where everyone likes to talk. Okay, you have ideas, he has ideas, and you both want to express your ideas, and that may work for you. For me, it's not going to work. For me, if you like to talk, you can't be my chavuta. Why? I need to talk. That's just the way it works. That's the way. Now, on the other hand, with the relationship that I have with my... With my that's the way it is. I'm serious. But, so if you want to talk, you have to find a different chavuta. Now, don't worry. Even if you don't like to talk, you still can't be my chavuta. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I have a chavuta already. I have my rav. Now, when I have a relationship with my rav, guess what? I can't talk. Why? He's the one that talks. So it's, it's, so it's, a, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing to not talk while he's talking for, let's say, an hour straight or however long it is. Uh, but it works. 
Why does it work? Because I know he's a genius. So therefore, I need to hear him talk. Which means there has to be a certain relationship there that fits, but also a certain amount of respect for each party. Each person needs to know their role. Now, sometimes we'll debate certain issues. Most of the times, it's not. Most of the time, it's him talking and me trying to pretty much be a sponge. Just like you guys are trying to be here. Similar. Similar. So, again, it all depends on the relationship, on the, on, on the synergies between them. It depends also what you want to learn. Meaning, if you want to learn Gemara, and he wants to learn Musa, that's either one of you settles for the other, or you have to find a different Chavuta. You know, don't argue about it every single time. You have to have a certain plan, a certain plan. Now, it's a, uh, if, if a person is only going to look at things from their own perspective, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to find a Chavuta. So there has to be sometimes that you, you know, you... Uh, you make a, uh, uh, an agreement to do certain things and so on. Last but not least, it has to be a reliable person, which is probably one of the most important things. Meaning, if you can have a chavuta, that person has to be reliable to be at the same place at the same time every single day. If they're one of those people where for them to be 15, 20 minutes late is early, that's not a good chavuta. The person you're going to be a chavuta with has to be a person that's on time and is reliable. Not every day telling, no, listen, my wife needs me. And the next day, ah, oh, my kids need me. Ah, oh, my boss needs me. Every day he's got a new excuse. It's not a good chavuta. Every day he's late. Every day he's got a flat tire. Every day there's 500 excuses of why he's late. It's not a good chavuta. It's not school. No, no, no. I, I'm late today, but I have a doctor's note. I have a dog. No, I went to the dog. He shows you proofs of why he's late. It's not a good chavuta. It has to be a reliable person that's there, same time, and wants to do it. If he's dragging his feet, go home. Go home. Why? Because that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Torah learning is serious. It's not, a, uh, it's not child's play. You're not supposed to lay down on your bed comfy reading uh, the parashat shavua. It's not, it's not Harry Potter. You have to be serious, and you have to have serious people. If you have somebody that's serious, but if the person likes to eat the donuts more than he likes to read the books, find somebody else. That also happens sometimes when people like to get groups, groups together, and then you see it also many times, you see it in shuls. You, uh, you get a shul, and a bunch of guys, four, five, six guys, get together, they put some burekas, they put some uh, this, some that, 15 different drinks, and, uh, and they start learning. That's not learning. That's not learning. That's socializing. Why? Because many times they're so busy with the food, they forget there's a book in front of them. They forget there's a book in front of them. And aside from that, aside from that, not that this food is always bad. I mean, if you're eating food at 3 o'clock in the morning to stay awake, it's one thing. But if it's, a, uh, if it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's your fourth meal already, there's a problem. You know? But the other thing also is that when you have a group, when you have a group of people, if more than one person talks, it's no longer learning. It's socializing. And so you have to be able to give people turns. He talks, then he talks, and you go back and forth, and sometimes there's a few screams because you're debating an issue, and you're, you're, you're sure that this is emet, and he's sure that that's emet, and that's all fine. And we're not talking, this is not a library that's supposed to be quiet. But it has to be organized chaos. And it has to be something that is productive. If you feel like you're getting better and closer to Hashem as a result of your study sessions, continue. But if you see that the only thing you're getting out of these study sessions is fatter and more friendly with people, change the study session. Change the study session. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rabbi Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app You'll be able to donate online and support our Cube and our Torah work that we're doing. 
And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat